Another great day. Beautiful day to get back to work, uh, get on the field. It's uh, so refreshing. You know, Wednesday's about work. It's about recapturing our work ethic, uh, put the pads on, had a fantastic day of just running and hitting, um, just focusing on the football and trying to take advantage of the day. So love that. Love the response of the guys. Um, right back to work. Any questions? Um, with Clowney and, and Hacker, yeah. those injuries that happened late in the game or how, how did those happen? Can't tell you exactly what time uh, of the game it was, uh, but it was on one of the returns where Johnny's back started to tighten up, and he finished up the game for us. Um, did a fantastic job getting us through that, and so uh, we're treating him um, today. We held him out just to get a little bit more rest, you know, and then we'll evaluate him as the next couple days go on. Uh, Jadavian's ankle just came out sore at the, in the game, so wanted to manage him today, um, give him a day to just get back so we can get him back out there in some of our packages. Tommy was back out there. Yeah. Ads, uh, how did he look? He looked great. He looked fast. He looked physical in the run game. Uh, he looked like Tommy, so we're excited to get him back. Are you okay. going to work out punters? Um, not as of right now, but we're definitely, you know, looking across. We have a long list of guys that we're looking at um, so that as we evaluate Johnny, we got to be ready to, to be able to do that. And did Clowney's ankle affect his performance and production Sunday? I thought he looked fantastic in the game. Um, I thought he had some great rushes, you know, played his edge stout like he always does, uh, gave, great, gave great effort. Um, and I think just the accumulation of the plays, you know, just builds up some soreness. And so we're just trying to take it, you know, take care of that so we can get him back out there. Dave, what are you looking for from the guys after a game? Like, what, when you come into practice on Wednesday, what do you Yeah. Think? Right back to the basics, right? So that's every that's every day, but that's particularly Wednesday because you know you have the you have the Monday tell the truth. Let's look at the film. Let's talk about it. Get through it. Tuesday, big body recovery day for the guys. You know that's the players' day off for them to kind of regroup. You know physically, mentally, spiritually. The whole thing is just to kind of regroup to be ready to take on the challenge of a new week. As we know. We got to move forward. Here comes another opponent. The guys were fired up when they got in here today. Um, and uh, so we just go right back to the basics of ball. The football, drill it, work on it, emphasize it, come off the ball, be physical. That's why we put pads on on Wednesdays. And uh, the guys were all there and ready for it. Coach, uh, is it big uh, void on the defensive line now? Any early candidates for any of the young guys stepping up? Well, I mean, you got you got guys like LeBron Ray. You got uh, uh, Nick Thurman, who's been up. Um, we have PV, uh, who's on our team. Um, we just added Deshaun Williams to the practice squad as well. So uh, we got some good guys that have played football, that have seen games. So uh, we'll be able to evaluate those guys and have a plan for this week. It is a hardball coach team, so yeah. the defensive line is going to be ready for the run. You know, and play action. Absolutely. That's what Wednesday's about. Put the pads on. We get right to it. You know, start looking at the looks and, and really trying to diagnose it and have that discipline in the run game. What's well, something that the defense against the run can kind of tighten up after last week as you prepare to face a team you know is going to come in? And yeah, yeah, just the basics. You know, the basics. Footwork, hand placement, leverage, everybody working together, team tackling, you know, the whole thing. So just tightening those things up um, and just making sure that the effort is there in practice so we're all running, we're all getting to our spots where we need to. And um, I expect to see improvement every week. That's our goal is one week better, um, that kind of mentality. So the guys are ready for the challenge. Dave, last week uh, you had talked about wanting to play the young guys at edge opposite Jadavian Clowney. Yeah. Sheriff was cut yesterday. Yeah. You guys bring in Charles Harris. I'm curious, what did you see from DJ and Iku in that game? As good as we can ask of those guys, uh, both guys played the edge physically, um, gave us what they could in the rush game. Um, I thought they really made a statement for themselves in terms of just being able to, to be those reliable guys that we're counting on uh, to do their part. And so I was really excited about their performance. I'm um, glad to have Charles here, a guy I've played against or coached against, excuse me, in the past when he was in Detroit. So uh, really excited to have another veteran presence there who's got some rush skills. So excited to see what he can do. Coach, you about um, – Flushing this and getting, yeah. getting rid of that loss. How do you feel like guys came back today and approached that? And any, any worry about this carrying over? Yeah, it's a weekly thing, right? So whether you win or lose, you got to flush it. You got to move on. Here comes the next opponent. We happen to have the Chargers, a fantastic opponent that's going to test our toughness. They're going to test our play style. Um, it's a version of football that I love, and I know Coach Harbaugh is going to have that mentality. So just like last week tested us in a lot of ways, we got another big one coming up. You know, so the guys just have to have that mentality. When we come into the building, it's all about the preparation of the new opponent, and that takes care of it. We don't have enough energy to be focusing on things in the past. We got to focus on today. Um, and I thought the guys captured a good Wednesday.
Yeah, yeah. Talking more about Mike's question, Shaq Thompson played some snaps at outside linebacker. Yeah. Is that a, just a game plan against the Saints type of thing, or is it a larger role for Shaq? playing outside linebackers in the edge. Loved what he did in the game. Um, I don't want to talk about the scheme we're going to do this week, um, but it just gives us some versatility of things we can do with guys. On Monday, you had said that um, one of those blitzes you thought Bryce could have checked out of. Yeah. Uh, recognized better. Uh, how much uh, flexibility does he have on a play-by-play -play basis to, you know, to change plays at the line? I want to stay away from schematic discussions going into a week. Um, there's things built in for Bryce to get us to the right play uh, to do things. He's done a fantastic job with that. So I won't kind of leave it at that. I don't really want to get into the details of when we're asking him to do things. It's just not in our best interest to, to do that. That was one of the things coming out that, you know, his processing skills that everybody was raving about. Right. Is that something you think you can take advantage of, you know, now or in the future? Certainly. I would hope so, you know, and I think those things just take time. It takes games, you know, to just have those experiences, to identify the things you can attack. Um, it's something we certainly can continue to build. And working with quarterbacks in the past, have you ever had a situation where you felt like it was good for the guy, quarterback to sit and watch and, and kind of catch up with the speed of the game from the sideline? Uh, has that ever been a situation with you? I'm not saying you're going to bench Bryce, but is that something you would look at at some point? Like, Best experience you could have is to be on the field and to just live it, you know, and he's got, you know, 17 or well, 16 games from last year. He's got another one under his belt. So we just keep building on experiences to lean on, um, lessons to learn, all those things, you know, so um, there's there's no way to replace that. Kind of back to uh, Steve's question about the mentality, how much, is, how much work are you doing uh, with the players and for the mental aspect? And I know it's, you know, 24 hour rule, everybody's got to flush you right. on to the next one, but a loss like that does have a chance of tendency to linger. Where do you kind of fall in on getting guys, you know, moving towards week two and so on? Yeah, live it. You know, my primary responsibility as the head coach is to look at the opponent coming up to be all in. I'm gassed from this practice. It's a Wednesday. We're running. I'm hollering at both sides. Let's get this run game right. All of my energy is in today. I'm going to go in tonight, have some great meetings with the coaches and prep for third down. I really don't have a lot of energy for anything else. I hope the guys can follow that lead as well. Our focus is today. Our focus is on the next practice. Can we capture today? It's the greatest day of our lives. It's the best one we got, all of us sitting here. It's just today. That's all we got. And so I just want to be spent tonight when I go home and just be, have nothing left in the cup. And I hope the guys can feel that and follow that lead. What's your relationship like with David Tepper? Have yeah. you spoken with him since Sunday's loss? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I talked to him. And, and of course, these are people that I want to make proud of what we're doing here and what we're building. So um, it means a lot to me um, to make sure that I connect with him, to, to connect with Nicole, um, to be able to talk about just the state of our, our organization, the state of the the just kind of like following up on games. You know, I look forward to that process, you know. So we had some good times uh, to connect after the games. Those are private conversations, you know, that I'll keep to myself. Um, but, you know, a lot of support. Happy birthday, by the way, David. Um, hope you're having a great time with the family. Yeah, Dave, on the standpoint of like moving guys around, I know you don't really want to get into scheme, but did you learn anything about your guys' self from, from a pressure standpoint, just from, I, I guess, protection, from, from a protection standpoint, your plan going in? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Again. We got out coached in some in some spots, so we're doing a you know we're going through the process and looking at you know how can we streamline some things, how can we formation things to get more information, all that stuff. So again, I don't want to get into too many specifics of the schemes. As you prepare for the Chargers, what are some opportunities that you're looking at to kind of take advantage of offensively? Um, I don't really want to talk about that either. I, uh, I know people are listening to the press conference, so you know I think uh, just in what do you see from them? Uh, when you, when you're ju just them? in general, another just a high respect for the people that they've accumulated there, um, from a coordinator standpoint, coaching standpoint, the players they acquired, a fantastic challenge for us. Going to call everything that we have to play this game. I'm counting on it. So another great opportunity, great championship moment to come in the house um, and play our kind of football. Dave, what did you think of Xavier Leggett's debut? Fantastic. Um, he's big and fast. He played fast. There's a difference. Um, when young guys get out there, sometimes what can happen with guys is they get paralyzed by the, by the, the picture moving so quickly. He played fast. 
He really did. Um, he gave us a chance on a bunch of plays. Bryce had a nice a couple throws to him, you know, in different situations. But his reactions to what happened was what I was so pleased about. Okay, I'm um, not crowning him. He's got a long way to go. He's got a lot of work to clean up his details, all those things. Um, but I was really happy with the way he came out and the way he performed. We haven't talked to you since the final prognosis with Derek Brown. Yeah. What was it like having that conversation with him? Just how did what, what did he say to you? As he Just heartbroken. Um, me, myself, and, and of course Derek as well. Um, and just feeling for a guy who just, he just, again, he embodies the passion. He embodies the play style, the football style that we're looking for here. He embodies it every single day, every practice, the meetings, every game. He's exactly what we want to play like. So we use it as an inspiration, but also just, just feeling for him because he really wants to be a part of this process as we bring this team together and become us. What did you learn about yourself as a head coach last week, either in terms of weekday preparation or game day execution, any, any or all of it? Yeah, just trying to capture moments. I thought we had a great week of practice. I thought we captured every day to show the guys examples of us capturing the day and the effort that it requires to play at a high level in this league. Um, you know, in game, we're not going to quit. We're never going to quit. Um, and that's what I challenged the guys, the players, and that's the character of this team. They didn't quit. We kept playing hard, kept hunting, kept trying the whole time. And so just learned about just connecting with the guys and being able to, you know, on game day to feel that the challenge of that day, you know, the discipline to continue to go forward. Um, and again, it just bleeds right over into the character of this team as we approach this week to bring that kind of mentality every day. Is there anything that more? you would say, yeah, that's something with my next game I might do differently? Um, nothing to note, really, specifically. We got David, Alex, Alex, Steve, Deontay, Reed, yeah. and come on. You want yeah. Steve, okay. David, and Mike Solarte. You know what I'm okay. David, you talked about how you wanted Deontay to be a big part of the offense. Yeah. I mean, uh, he had six targets, two, but only two catches. So yeah. What, what can you guys do to kind of free him up, get him more opportunities, I guess? We're working on that. Okay. Yeah. Love to. Love to get him going, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you about the Chargers run game. Um, how much do you study their offense to, with Harbaugh? Do you go back and look at Michigan and what he did at all, or is it all on what they did last week that you focus on? And, and, and how much concern is their commitment to the run from what your defense did against it? We've got to look at a lot of stuff um, and just really look at the style of football that he wants to play first and foremost, you know, and then um, and looking at his offensive coordinator, Greg Roman, he's fantastic. He's one of the one of the premier offensive coordinators in the NFL. He's back. He's got a style about him. He's got things he did with Lamar in Baltimore. We coached against him in San Francisco back in the day when, when I started in Seattle. Um, always had a high level of respect for him and the way that they game plan and their commitment to the toughness in the run game um, is something that I really admire. So um, we definitely looked at a lot of stuff and uh, we know what to expect. And they don't have a problem us knowing that. You know, we got to come, we got to show up, and and we got to have our answers. Last question for Mike. when you were with Seattle, I'm guessing that you made. You and the Seahawks made cross country tracks to go play on the East Coast. What were the pitfalls for teams doing that? I know you don't have to, but they do this week. And how were you able to avoid, or how were you and Seattle and Pete Carroll able to avoid some of those pitfalls to perform well? And, and that, how, that, how that all unfolds for, for a coach and his players? Yeah, you got to wake up. You got to wake up the whole group. Um, so, you know, the games start earlier for you, you know, and so you plan to have earlier ga earlier practices so your body readiness is there. Uh, we would get there two days early. So we'd, we'd get there on a Friday night um, so that you kind of had a day to acclimate um, and kind of stay on your rhythms from a sleep standpoint, but then the readiness, just waking up, doing walkthroughs, that type of thing. And then on game day, it was all hands on deck. It was an absolute fantastic time. You know, Pete called on the coaches. We would be going nuts, waking guys up. We'd play music in the mill room um, and just be all hands on deck that way to try to just really just jolt everybody up, say, hey, we are going to play, and it's going to be about 10 o'clock West Coast time. Let's go. You know, and just kind of looking at the guys, and the guys would kind of grin, and they knew we were going nuts with a purpose. But um, it worked for us, you know, and so we came out, and we had, we had good readiness, you know, from kickoff until the end. How tough are those trips, West, West East? Oh, yeah, they're rough. They're rough, you know, but um, – you know, we had a style about it, and uh, again, it helps when you have really good teams like we had in Seattle, but uh, we just make sure we got them going, and, and we did pretty good on the road. All right, thank you, Coach.
Yep. Thanks, Thank you. Cheers.